Hi everyone, it's Sherry Vegas and in this new resin tutorial today I'm going to be trying out the very cool water resin effect. I'm really in love with this effect in resin. I think it is so cool and I have been seeing it starting to trend around on social media. These two artists up here are the ones that I saw it through first. Um, I'm not sure who exactly started this, but I really do like them. Definitely go and check them out. I'll add their like links down below, but they're the ones that have inspired this video. Now, I don't know exactly how they do their process, but this is how I would do it doing this sort of technique. The first thing that I need to do is make some water ripples. And before I make my water ripples, I need to work out what size I need to make them. So I've picked my canvas out and I've cut some cardboard out just a little bit smaller than the size of my canvas. So that way I'll have a nice white border going around my water ripples. So basically I'm making some water ripples using some textured paste. And the reason why I'm using this is just because it's gonna be really easy to make some cool effects in and I need to make this first so that way I can then make a mold from that and then once I have the silicon mold I can then pour resin into the silicon mold which will then give me my resin water ripples. So there is a little bit of a process to get started into making this sort of piece and first up with my texture paste onto my cardboard all my cardboard's doing is just creating a base and then I'm just going to be swirling that around until I get the desired pattern or shape that I want. I honestly spent so much time doing this I could not decide on how I wanted it to look and I probably spent way too much time and even in the end I wasn't that completely happy with it but it's all a learning process. Now, if you do want to be able to use this sort of water ripple again and make multiple molds from it, so that way you can make multiple pieces at once, you do want to use something a little bit stronger than just textured paste onto cardboard. I'd recommend maybe using either eco resin or cement and putting that onto a wood backing because I do know that once I have poured the silicone over the top of this, to remove this from the silicone, it is going to break and I'm not gonna be ever able to make another mold from this. I've let this piece dry for over 24 hours because it does need to be completely dry before you can make a silicon mold out of it. You also need to have a frame to place it in. I've just made one out of cardboard so that way I can make sure that it fits nicely. You could use whatever you want it to. If you do want to have this where you can make multiple silicon molds out of the one piece, then you can make a more durable frame than just cardboard. So make it out of out of melamide so that way you can do multiple pours in the one go but because this is just going to be for the one use I'm just using it out of cardboard and then I'm using some painters tape just to stick it down to the bottom so that way when I do pour my silicone it won't float and the silicone won't have the ability to get underneath it and then on the top of that I'm just using some mold release spray all over and this just helps that silicone release from whatever item you are molding. The silicone that I'm using today to make my mold is Pinky Seal for barns, but you can use whatever silicone you like or that is easy to get to. I do like this one because one part is pink and one part is white and it's really easy to see when you have mixed your silicone the whole way through because it will blend together. You won't see any more of that white, but there's so many out there on the market. So I just give that a really quick mix up. I love watching this mix in together. And as soon as that is fully combined, I can then pour it out onto my mold. This pinky seal does set quite fast. So you've only got like a good few minutes, probably 10 at the most to mix it up and pour it out. So you just want to make sure you've got everything ready to go before you do um, start mixing it. I like to mix just a little to start with, just enough to coat the piece fully. And then once that has fully been coated and dried, I will mix up a new batch to fully flood that. I just like to do it this way because it helps me get any bubbles out because it's only a thin layer. And it also stops the silicone from being able to get underneath the piece and lift it. Even though I did tape it down, you will find that silicone will still try to like pour into every little crack. So we're doing it this way 
it just really makes it a lot easier for me. And then I just use a heat gun without the heat. I've turned the heat off just to go along and pop any bubbles that might be in there. Once that has fully set, I then go and mix up another batch and then pour that just straight over the top. And then I just need to leave that silicone to set. I find this silicone sets very fast, but depending on what brand you use can change the time. But normally within an hour or two hours, I am demolding the piece. And the reason why I do like to make my frames out of cardboard is means I can just rip it apart and it makes it so much easier to get the mold out. And you can see here as I'm pulling it out, it does break the textured piece, which I knew was gonna happen anyway. But obviously if you wanna have a piece that's a lot tougher, make it out of clay or eco resin or cement so that way you can make a few molds out of the one sort of ripple effect. I did go and wash this out with some dishwashing liquid just in my sink to get rid of all of that dust because I don't want any of that transferring into my resin. Once I'd given that a really good wash out I then brought that back in and just gave it a spray with alcohol just to take any sort of um, dust or dirt that might still be clinging into the mold because it really does hold into that silicone. And then once I was happy with it I mixed up some casting resin. I'm using the epoxy cast resin from Barnes today and this is a two to one ratio casting resin which I'm also going to add one drop of blue. So this blue is turquoise and it's a tint from Barnes. You can use whatever tints you want to use. This stuff is really strong so one drop was plenty and then I'm just going to give that a really good mix through um, my resin just to make sure it has fully combined in into the resin. Then when my tint and my resin had combined, I can then just pour it over my mold. I'm using about 300 mils of resin, but obviously depending on how big you're making your piece, that will change. I'm leaving this for well over 24 hours before I do demold it. If you demold casting resin too soon, you'll find your piece will still be quite soft and floppy. So you wanna make sure that you really give it a good length of time before you do pour, pull it out of the mold. Once the resin had fully cured and hardened, I could then pull it out of my mold. And you can see that the mold picks up, like the resin picks up all of that texture from the mold. I am gonna lose some when I do top coat this piece. And I do have some rough edges all around the side because obviously when I pour the silicone on that, it picks up all of that roughness. So if your piece isn't perfect, it's not a big deal because we can always go in and sand off all of those edges. But you can see here, it looks really good with that white backing of my canvas, it really makes it pop. But before I top coat, I need to get all of that roughest, roughness off and just make sure that I've got a nice even sort of area to work with. So I'm just using some sandpaper and I'm taking off all of that until I get to the point where I am happy with all of my edges. Once I am happy with my sanding, I did just go and wash this piece just to remove any of the sanding dust because I don't want any of that to get into the resin for the next layer. And now I've just poured liquid latex onto the back of the piece, just around the edges. And this is just gonna protect it so that way when I do flood coat this piece with resin, any of the drips that will go underneath will be able to be easily pulled off because the latex will act as a barrier. And that way when it is dry, I can just pull that off and take all of those drips. Now now I've just mixed up some epoxy art resin this time for the flood coat and I've added one drop of this ice blue alcohol ink pigment just because I thought it was really pretty and would add a really beautiful soft blue to my flood coat. And I am using some interference blue and just adding that onto the high points of my piece just because I thought it'd be really pretty that when the light catches it in certain areas, you could see a little bit of a sort of sparkle, but I definitely don't want this piece to be fully sparkly. So I'm just adding it into a few key points, just using my finger that's gloved and just wiping that over the top. Once I've done that, I can then start adding my flood coat of resin all over my piece. I found using my gloved hand really helpful to rub that resin all through to make sure every area was really coated. I feel like if you just pour resin over the top, you're gonna to get some parts that will have lots of resin and some parts that won't because of all of that sort of the high and lows of this piece because it's not completely even. You're not gonna be able to let the resin just level out. So by rubbing it in, you're gonna make sure that every bit of this piece does get fully covered in resin.
While I was doing this, I also made sure that all the edges had a nice layer of resin and that way that hid all of my sanding marks from before. And then I just used my blowtorch to pop any bubbles that I might have in my piece. So this is the piece now top coated and there's a few things I wish I had done slightly different but it's always a learning experience. I still think this is a pretty cool piece and I'm pretty happy with it but that's the one thing I wish I had changed up so instead of trying to create like little like swirls and patterns that way I wish I kind of just went for big peaks, low peaks and done it like that a little bit like a hillside and just a lot more not so much like wide open spaces but I still think it looks really cool and it captures the light really cool so I'm, I'm still quite happy with it. Now you can see a tiny amount of some of that interference blue that I did add on to the peaks but it's not super noticeable it's more when the, like the light catches it but I still think it's pretty cool. I didn't want this piece to be sparkly um, even though I love sparkles I did just want to add just that tiny bit to catch the light. Don't forget to check out the two artists that did inspire this tutorial. I have linked them down below in the description. But as I was creating this piece, I did start to get some new ideas of how to do this technique in different ways and maybe a little bit more effective ways. Um, so if you would like to see another tutorial using this sort of effect but using different techniques, um, let me know. Pop it down in the comments below. Or if you have any helpful hints or tips, any little tricks if you've ever made a piece like this before, I'm always open to new ideas because there's always more than one way to create a certain sort of piece so I'm always happy to trial out different ideas but I've really enjoyed making this I'm definitely going to do some more testing and developing on this style um, but if you did get some like use out of this video and you did enjoy it please give it a big thumbs up it always helps me out and if you are new to my channel please do subscribe as I post new videos every single week and I have a huge resin playlist so definitely go and check that out but thank you guys so much for watching.